let us now consider oxidation reduction reactions, commonly known as redox. To put them in perspective, let's first compare them to a type of reaction that we're very familiar with, and that is an ionic reaction. So we are already familiar that a sodium ion can combine with a chloride ion to give you the charge neutral compound known as sodium chloride. But the question becomes, where did this sodium ion come from and where did the chloride ion come from? Well, the sodium ion came from a sodium atom. And it has a zero charge because as we know from looking at the periodic chart, the number of protons and electrons in a sodium atom are the same and therefore it carries a zero charge. And the same could be said of a chlorine atom. So let's look carefully at this. We now see that we are moving from a charge, and I'm considering sodium here, of zero charge to a positive one. The only way we can do that is to lose an electron. And I will just show it with an arrow representing that this electron is lost from this sodium and now that results in a sodium ion. Similarly, the only way a chlorine atom can become a chloride ion is to gain an electron. And so what we see is an electron transfer from one chemical species to another. And this is the essence of an oxidation reduction reaction. Well, what is an oxidation? Oxidation is a loss of electrons and reduction is a gain of electrons. And so this is where redox comes from. There's the R-E-D-O-X, a redox reaction. In any redox reaction, something is oxidized and something is reduced. Now that suggests the question of interest. Which of these species was the one that was oxidized and which was reduced? Well, before I answer that, let me say that these few words here give rise to one of my favorite acronyms, and that is oxidation is loss, Reduction is gain. Oil rig. So we can see, returning to our diagram now, sodium lost an electron and therefore it is what was oxidized and chlorine gained an electron and it is the chemical species that was reduced. One more consideration while we're on this diagram. How many electrons were transferred? Only one electron was transferred. True, there were two activities. An electron was lost by something and an electron was gained by something, but nevertheless, only one electron was transferred. One might draw the analogy of two people throwing a baseball someone throws a baseball, someone else catches a baseball, but at the end of the day, only one baseball was thrown. And let me make one more remark on this diagram before we move to a uh, redox reaction and illustrating that. This part of the schematic that I have shown this is what we've known all along as an ionic reaction. It is this part, notice the overlap, but it is this part that is the redox reaction. And so there you can see the two contrasted. And so with that, let's move on to a particular example and let's see if we can answer a few questions about that reaction. Most notably, 
Is it a redox reaction? And if so, what was oxidized and what was reduced? And finally, a very common asked question, how many electrons were transferred in the redox reaction? So let's consider the combustion of magnesium metal to make magnesium oxide. To work this problem, to consider if it's a redox, we have to know if an electron was transferred. And the way we do that is we look at the oxidation numbers or the charges to see if any of them changed. If even one atom gains or loses an electron, then the reaction must necessarily be a redox. So sodium metal has a zero charge. Remember, this is sodium metal, not sodium ion. Oxygen has a zero. But here, magnesium is part of a compound, and it bears a positive 2 charge. And oxygen here has its familiar minus 2 charge, or oxidation number. So now let's look to see what it is that happened. Let's track magnesium first. Magnesium went from a 0 charge to a plus 2 charge. Therefore, I know that it lost 2 electrons. To gain a positive two charge, it must have lost two electrons. So my first question has already been answered. Yes, this is a redox reaction. The second question was, well, if it's a redox, which, com which species were oxidized and which were reduced? To answer that question fully, let's continue on. Each oxygen atom went from a zero charge to a minus charge. So the only way to gain a negative charge is to gain electrons. And in this case, it gains two electrons. So now we can use our familiar acronym, oil rig. And since this is the chemical species that lost electrons, then we know that it was oxidized. So I'll just put oxidation is loss and that's what indicates that minus sign indicates it's a loss similarly oxygen gained two electrons so it was reduced reduction is gain and there you have it there's the species identified the final question that we were going to consider is how many electrons were transferred and one might quickly jump to the conclusion that the answer is two because you see two are lost and two are gained. That matches up in the sense of the number of electrons lost will always be equal to the number of electrons gained and vice versa. But this is still the wrong answer because we fundamentally have missed something that we should have done a very long time ago. We didn't balance the chemical equation. Notice you have two oxygens on the reactant side and only one on the product side. So now let's go back and balance the chemical equation. And now let's reassess this. So I have each magnesium atom lost two electrons, but I had two magnesium that did that. So there's a total of a total of four electrons were transferred. And now we know that each oxygen gained two electrons, but a total of two oxygens actually gained two electrons each. And so the number of electrons transferred was actually equal to four. Note that if you don't have a balanced chemical equation, you very well may miss the, the uh, question about how many electrons. But to the extent to which it was oxidized or reduced, that must be done in the context of a balanced chemical equation. Mm -hmm.